California Governor Gavin Newsom recently challenged the Florida's governor to a one-on-one -on -one debate. This comes after the two have publicly criticized each other in recent months. What uh, Ron DeSantis is doing is... California Governor Gavin Newsom has challenged Florida Republican Governor Ron DeSantis to a debate. This comes as the two states head towards the gubernatorial elections in November. On Friday, DeSantis remarked that Newsom's, quote, hair gel is interfering with his brain function. After Newsom asked the DOJ to investigate whether migrants were lured across the country based on false promises of employment. Newsom then said via Twitter, calling DeSantis, busy playing politics with people's lives. Let's take this up and debate. I'll bring my hair gel. You bring your hairspray. Newsom tweeted in response to an idea from journalist Dan Rather about televising a CNN debate between the two governors. Newsom recently called the transporting of illegal immigrants morally reprehensible, but news about one of Newsom's previous programs resurfaced. According to Fox News, Newsom launched the Homeward Bound program when he was mayor of San Francisco, which gave homeless people one-way bus tickets out of the city. Both governors are up for re-election this November, but it remains to be seen whether they will both run for U.S. presidency in 2024. The governor is promoting California's new abortion website for non-Californians by placing billboards in seven states. Local leadership is responding in turn. California Governor Gavin Newsom is continuing to raise his profile in other states by placing a series of billboard ads highlighting California's new state-funded website for Americans seeking an abortion. Billboards feature a woman in handcuffs next to text saying their state doesn't own their body, followed by the new Californian abortion website abortion.ca.gov. The ads will be placed in several Republican-led states, Indiana, Mississippi, Ohio, Texas, South Carolina, South Dakota, and Oklahoma. Newsom noted on Thursday in a tweet that the ads were to explain how women could get abortion care in, quote, anti-freedom states. South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem tweeted in response last week, saying, In South Dakota, we are a destination for freedom and life. Now that you've run your billboards in SD, why don't you get to work cleaning up the human feces on the streets of your cities and turning the lights back on? Newsom's billboards cost $100,000 for 18 ads across the seven states. The Port of Los Angeles is offering incentives for zero-emission trucks to operate at the facility. That comes ahead of bans on certain non-EV trucks that the port will soon begin implementing. Officials announced that the Port of Los Angeles is now offering $5 million in incentives for zero-emission trucks to operate at the facility. The incentive program includes a voucher system that provides $150,000 in funding for each eligible zero-emission truck purchase that serves the San Pedro port complex. The vouchers will be issued on a first-come, first-served basis. The program would fund more than 30 trucks. Furthermore, the budget comes from the Clean Truck Fund. The Clean Truck Fund generates money by charging cargo owners $10 per loaded container. It is expected to generate $45 million annually. Gene Soroka, executive era. director of the Pollution Port of Los Angeles, free. said, We're pleased to start investing the clean truck fund dollars that we've been collecting since April and use them towards a zero emission future. The California Air Resource Board will require all trucks serving Los Angeles area ports to have 2010 or newer engine models by next year. That will result in nearly a quarter of trucks currently serving the port to soon be prohibited. In addition, the board will require all trucks operating at the ports to be zero emission by 2035. Currently, fewer than 40 trucks out of the 21,000 operating at the port meet the requirement. Dead fish were washing ashore in the Bay Area late last month. The state water board says flushing toilets may be causing an increase in toxic algae that killed off marine life. One scientist says algae blooms are a natural phenomenon. But whether toilets are to blame needs further investigation. A variety of fish and stingrays have been washing up dead on shores across the San Francisco Bay Area, leaving rotting carcasses accompanied by a suffocating smell. The culprit? A blooming of toxic algae that began in late July. 
uh, we came down and investigated and identified a uh, species of algae known as Heterosigma akashiwo, uh, which is known to form red tide algal blooms, that that's what was causing the discolored water here. Because this bloom is known to be associated with fish kills, uh, across, where it turns into a bloom um, in other places across the world, we were concerned that a fish kill might start here. Uh, and then early last week, reports started coming in of dead fish washing up on the shore of the San Mateo coastline uh, and other places around the bay. Rosenfield said the cause is the high amounts of treated wastewater dumped into the bay by the 40 wastewater treatment centers near the region. Wastewater has nitrogen and phosphorus, which accelerates growth of algae. God Weiss, chief scientist with Blue Green Water Technologies, told NTD that algae blooms are natural and common. Alga and cyanobacteria are part of the environment. They release, they produce most of the oxygen we breathe. The problem is not that they're there in the water. The problem is when they take over, when they form a bloom. However, Algae absorbs oxygen at night. Weiss says too much algae can cause oxygen levels to drop to the point of suffocating marine life. Another phenomenon that occurs when there's too much algae are toxic red tides. Some of the algae, similar to some of the cyanobacteria, can produce toxins. First and foremost, they can produce toxins that can harm the environment, people, fish, and the rest of the animals there. During a red tide, the water turns red-brown in color. In the Bay Area, the San Francisco Bay Regional Water Control Board determined that the algae bloom that killed the fish and wildlife was a red tide. The water board suspects that toilet flushing may have sent an abundance of nutrients into the bay, leading to the red tide. Water Board Chief Officer Eileen White said at a press conference in late August, if you flush the toilet, you're sending nutrients to local wastewater treatment plants that discharge to San Francisco Bay. White said all discharges into the bay meet current effluent limits, though nutrient loads have been increasing. But Weiss says more investigation is needed to determine whether liquid waste is really to blame. The organisms, cyanobacteria and alga, do need nutrients. A waste product is a source of it. Rather, if that was the case in this particular incident, I am not sure it needs to be investigated. But besides just flushing, or as you mentioned, the waste being poured into the bay, um, those are natural organisms that have been in the environment, in the waters for years, decades, centuries, millions of years. Having a bloom is a phenomenon that happens on occasion when conditions are just right. Although algae blooms can be harmful, Weiss says there are solutions to control them. If you have early indications uh, for the bloom, certainly when you see it uh, start to, uh, to dominate uh, the water, you can treat. And we have a LEGAR technology, which is a, a buoyant product that allows the active material to float on the surface, move around with winds and currents, and basically chase the bloom around. Using that in advance before the bloom takes over could have allowed the, the fish to, to live. But the San Francisco Water Board is taking a different approach. It's analyzing data collected about current nutrient load numbers and the science of red tide before possibly setting new effluent limits. Back in 2018, the Water Board tasked all wastewater utilities to study alternatives to dumping in the bay and upgrade equipment. The upgrades would cost an estimated $14 billion to implement. Red tides are not a problem unique to the Bay Area. Weiss says algae blooms could be occurring more frequently worldwide. Or the increase in reports could be that people are paying more attention to them now compared to before. For many car enthusiasts, there is nothing better than going fast and showing off your ride. But in Los Angeles, some drivers have taken an illegal spin on the hobby. NTD's Jackie Reels instead went to hear about the legal alternative at the evening speedway. 
We visited the Irwindale Speedway for its community-based program, the Thursday Night of Thunder, to find out what it offers as a legal alternative to street racing. Street racing, street takeovers and sideshows have been disturbing the peace throughout the evenings in Los Angeles recently. Police have recommended that car enthusiasts take the legal alternative at speedways. So does Tim Huddleston, president of Irwindale Speedway. You know, for bragging rights down the drag strip, that is all part of the legal safe fun. Let me tell you, come here and do it is a lot cheaper than doing it on the street, getting your car taken, or going to jail, or getting a huge fine. The 1 8th mile drag racing strip opened about 20 years ago. Since then, it has been offering a night for locals to come and race their car. Huddleston talked about the diverse lineup of racers he's seen over the years. Thursday Night Thunder, we call it. We've been doing it for about 20 years now. And it is a run what you brung drag racing series. You can come out with mom's station wagon, an ice cream truck, or a smart car. And you can run it down the drag strip for $40 all night long. As many times as you want, you just get back in line. Huddleston explain how speed factors into the safety requirements the drag strip has to raise. First requirement is that you have a valid California driver's license, be over the age of 18, and then depending on the kind of vehicle you have, there's different requirements based on speed. If you have a stock car, mom station wagon right off the street, you don't need anything but a stock seatbelt. As you go faster and the more race car you have, you need more and more requirements like a hel helmet, a roll cage, different uh, safety requirements, but that's all based on speed. Local law enforcement comes to the track on a weekly basis, but not to get people in trouble. Instead, is to keep people safe and off the streets. Yes, here at Irwindale Speedway, we are partner with lots of local law enforcement. California Highway Patrol, Los Angeles County Sheriff Department, and our own Irwindale PD all promote coming to Irwindale. We call save it for the track. So all of those departments come out here on a weekly basis. They set up a booth, hand out information. They're basically out there showing you that the police are here to help, right? They're here to just keep everyone safe and help. So if you come and do it here, they're going to cheer you on. You can actually sometimes even race a police officer if you do it here at the racetrack, but racing them on the street, it's not so good. Of course, there's also additional safety at the drag strip in case of an emergency. We have firemen and EMTs on site to put out a fire or make sure we have everybody safe, unlike you're, you are when you do it on the street. For those who love to race, distance is of no concern. Racers congregate from all over Southern California. We have drivers on a Thursday night come from San Diego to Bakersfield or the Inland Empire or the beach. They all come here to race on Thursday nights at Irwindale Speedway. The drag strip attracts both racers and audience alike, and some audience members eventually become racers too. That's what happened with Kelly Anderson. I came out, I started spectating, and for a few months me and my husband came out, my girlfriend, and we would spectate, and I kept seeing the kids go down the track, and I thought, if these little kids can do this, so can I. And I started racing um, at 51 years old, and October 10th, 2019. We've been racing this car for 20 years. We are currently the West Coast NA 10.5 champion. Um, and for 2021 and currently number one in points for 2022. So we definitely don't want to break it tonight. We got to put on a show up, up north. I would say for anyone who's thinking about coming to drag race, do it. Push past your fears. You are when you're uncomfortable is when you're growing. And if you're comfortable, you're stagnant. You want to push past fear. Give it a go. You'll be so surprised what's on the other side of that. Despite their need for speed, both amateur racers know to keep it on the track. Street racing is not worth it. It is not worth it. I'm also a part of, I'm on board with Street Racing Kills, a nonprofit organization geared for teaching kids safety and not street racing. You know, accidents happen. You don't expect it's going to happen, and they do. Not worth it. Keeping this track open is very, 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 very important. If this track were to close, street racing would get a hundred times worse. So From street legal to full-blown race vehicles, Irwindale Drag Dragstrip and Burnout Pit offers an alternative place to legal street racing and still provides those that like to drive fast and furious a place to test their car. Jackie Reels, NTD News, Los Angeles.